Well, I made this video to introduce you to the idea of an acceleration constraint. And where this usually comes into play is in systems like what you're seeing on the screen here, where we've got masses maybe connected to each other via some cables or ropes or strings that wind around pulleys. And we usually are asked questions about tension or um, weight or the distance or times or things that compare the two objects with each other. So one of the important skills is to be able to draw the forces properly on each object, but the other is to write a Newton second law equation for each of them. And that takes the form of F net equals M times A. Well, typically we have one object and it's got one acceleration value, but now we have multiple objects that may be accelerating differently. And this is what we refer to as an acceleration constraint. How much can one object accelerate compared to the other when they're tied on opposite ends of the same string? Well, it might be a little more complex than you'd expect. I'm going to start with the simplest one, and that's the one in this first figure here. Notice that the two objects are attached to either end of the string. And so when you pull on one end of the string up or down, the other end is going to move the same amount. And this, this is one that would be very easy to set up in a laboratory with a, a simple pulley, or you don't even need a pulley. You can just wind a cord around the end of a, a pencil or something and move things up and down. And what you can see is one and two will move the same amount. And so if they move the same amount, they're going to have the same velocity. And if they have the same velocity, then they would certainly have the same acceleration if we were to let them fall on their own. So in this situation, the acceleration constraint is that a1 and A2 have to be identical. Now, this looks kind of similar in that we've got a string wrapped, wrapped around one pulley, but the difference here is the mass is attached to the movable pulley. We sometimes call this a block and tackle system. And although it may not seem obvious, when you lift up on object one and you wind up some of the string, object two only raises up half the amount that you lifted object one. And that's because half of the cord that's, let's say, increasing between the pulley and object one comes from there, and the rest of it comes from this distance between the pulley and wherever it's tied off here. So again, this would be a very simple thing to set up and, and really not hard to measure if you had a ruler, but the acceleration constraint in this case is that A2 is only half of A1. It moves half as much and therefore it would accelerate half as much. And what I did here in the third system is I actually made a combination of the first two. And so this fixed pulley up here where we're just winding around does nothing to the acceleration. All it does is it changes the direction of the force from up to down or down to up. But here again we have this movable pulley where we've attached mass number two and that provides the same kind of acceleration constraint that we had over here. So, and then I just noticed that should be a two there. Did you notice that? You were probably wondering what I did. So here again, we have A2 is A1 divided by two or half of A1. And here's a system that I actually set up in the lab. I'm going to show you in just a moment because I actually did it myself and took some measurements because I didn't think it would be obvious. Here we have a fixed pulley attached to a little a vertical post. We have another fixed pulley attached to the corner of the table, and then we have mass number two attached to one of our movable pulleys. And so what I did here is I imagine I could pull object one this direction, and I could see how object two raised up in the vertical direction. And what I found was that mass number two also moved half of that of object one. Again, we've got fixed pulleys here and here that do nothing but change the direction of the force. It's only by attaching a mass to the movable pulley that we're going to get some difference in the distance traveled by each of those objects. So let me show you here what this looked like when I recorded it in the laboratory. Here's the setup I have in the lab. So I've got a block sitting on a table and I've got a string that goes round a pulley over another fixed pulley on the corner and then down and here's the movable pulley that string wraps around and goes up 
and it's just sort of tied off on the end there where my finger is. So that part's not moving right there at the end. And notice where this weight is hanging. It's right about at the 50 centimeter mark. This is a meter stick. So it's halfway up the meter stick. I'll show you the end of the meter stick right up here. Okay. Now this block is next to a half meter stick. So I'm going to move this block the entire half meter. That's 50 centimeters. And so you might expect when I'm done that the hanging weight has also moved half a meter. But let's take a look. You see how it's only at the 25 mark right now. So it moved from the 50 mark up to the 25 mark. That's only a quarter of a meter up, as I'm showing there. So for a half a meter's distance along the table, we got only a quarter of a meter, half that amount, moved on the, the movable pulley. So because the distance moved was half as much for the hanging weight, that must mean that its velocity was also half as much. And we've been talking about acceleration constraints. We can extend that to the acceleration of that hanging mass would also be half of the table's mass. So one thing I love about physics is seeing is believing. This is why we spend time in the laboratory. So even though that was just a video of what, what you could do in the laboratory, maybe in, in my class or in your own class, you have a chance to build something like that. It's very simple to set up. It took me maybe 10 minutes to find the parts. Um, and I think it makes something that's not really intuitive to a lot of people make a lot more sense. So um, just so you know how this comes into play, in an ideal situation with massless strings and, and ideal frictionless massless pulleys, the tension in these strings would be the same no matter what. So what we'd have here is for object two, we actually have two tension forces lifting up on it. But for object one, we just have one tension force. It happens to go rightward in this situation. So those tension forces would be acting on both objects and therefore would be in both of the Newton's second law equations. Well, of course, their own accelerations would also be part of the Newton's second law equations. And so, um, you have accelerations and you have tensions, and it seems like sometimes in these problems, like, well, I have too many unknowns. How am I going to solve this? But if you have the same tension and you have the same acceleration, again, what you do is you would just substitute one of these accelerations in for the other using your acceleration constraint, and it takes what was two unknowns down to just one unknown. So it makes these systems solvable mathematically. So hopefully that helps you kind of see how we use an acceleration constraint. Maybe you go build one in the lab yourself to convince yourself even better. That'll do it for now.